is a good example of this is years ago, probably four years ago when uh, my aunt who's a hospice worker and she was taking care of a lady who was supposedly in the last few days of her life with cancer and she had been dying of cancer for quite some time and they thought that she was literally within a few days a day or two of dying and then one day it was a woman and she had a family and there was kids and stuff and one day the husband wakes up and the kids wake up and mom, who was on her deathbed for the last week, like semi-conscious at times, mostly not conscious, is up vacuuming the living room. And they go and they say, Mom, like, we thought you were dying. What are you doing vacuuming the living room? You know, yesterday, you're not even conscious, and today you're vacuuming the living room. And she said something very simply. She says, I can't die yet. And they go, why not? And she says, I don't know who I am. How can I die without knowing who I am? Well, my aunt was there, who came to a lot of satsangs and retreats with me, and she heard that, and her little antenna went up. And it was like, I know who you must come see. So I get a call. I was still working at that time and teaching. I get a call at work and my aunt says, da 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 there's this woman I'm working with and she tells me the story and she says she wants to come and see you. And I say, sounds like now. Bring her now. And so she, she puts her in the car and they literally drive down to where I was working in Mountain View. And she brings it. Fortunately, I was working with my father so we could just stop everything. So she brings this wonderful lady in to see me and she sits down and I say, so what's happening? She says, well, I'm dying. And I said, hmm, you could have fooled me. Because, of course, there she is. And she says, well, I said, what brings you to see me? And, of course, she says, well, I woke up this morning and I realized I can't really die because I don't really know who I am yet. I've pretty much done lots of things in life. She was middle-aged, but she actually had come to a fair amount of peace about her life. And he said, but I don't really know who I am. And I said, well, doesn't sound like you, you got much time to waste, do you? She says, nope. I say, then you better get on with it, like really quick. Find out what you are right now. And she said, you're right. And that was pretty much the end of our conversation. She went home. The next night she sewed up at Satsangs. And she came for a little, for several weeks. And we would talk now and then together. And one day she came up to me and she said, I can die now. And I said, yeah? She said, I realized it. I know what I am. I know that this never dies. She goes, now I can die. And as soon as she knew that, I got a call like a day and a half later. She's in bed. She's barely conscious. Family wants you to come over and see her because she might not last 24 more hours. So the wisdom of something that was very deep inside of her when she was almost dead, literally, got her up out of the grave almost, got her to really look at what was really true. Because, of course, for her, none of her energy was now going into sustaining her life. You see, none of her psychology, none of her process was involved in all of the trivialities. You know, who's right, who's wrong, this, that, this, that, what I think, what I don't think, who I like, who I don't like, da-da-da-da-da. All this stuff, there was no time. So the deeper impulse wasn't, wasn't being cluttered over. And it woke her up out of that almost like a coma, kept her away, kept her vital enough so she could really look inside for maybe three, work, three weeks. And then when it had accomplished its tasks, it let her go. That eternity woke up within her. She realized what she was.
And of course, nobody needs to wait till that point. Only all we have to do is look at what's really important. What do I really want? It helps clear away this clutter of the egoic trance. It's literally in a trance. And we can really look at what am I? Not how can I do this? How can I do that? How can I heal this? How can I heal that? How can I get a better job? How can I do th What am I? You see, it's like, even though it just sort of clears this trance away, what's actually important? Of course, if that's not important, you know, that's perfectly okay. And that's a grace when we really, that desire for what's really true, for the truth of our being is actually the most important thing. And stays the most important thing. Sustains itself. And it's amazing when that starts to happen in a human being because just as that saying that Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added unto you, only when that desire for truth sustains itself and when we realize our, the truth of our being to be the one, when our love of that sustains itself, you see, it wasn't just seek first the kingdom of heaven until you realize it and then forget about it. Right? Because you can. You can actually wake up and then find that there's a lot of other things more important to you than being awake. But when it sustains itself, then that's freedom. Then, mysteriously, the rest, all else is added unto you. It means that you, when you are really awake in the truth, you find that you just sort of fall into this flow. Probably everybody in this, in this room at times has just sort of been in a moment of flow or a day of flow or a week of flow or a month of flow. You just sort of start to flow. When you're sort of in a process of flow in that state of surrender, then things start to be added unto you. Opportunities come to you. You don't have to make them happen. Things open up. You don't have to keep constantly be prying open doors. They just they start to open. Things mysteriously start to start to order themselves. Life just starts to sort of unfold for you. It doesn't ma mean that every single moment is just, you know, that you just sit on your couch and let everything happen. It's not what I mean to imply. That you're actually flowing with the movement of life itself. And that's what this saying, all else will be added unto you, really means mysteriously things open up that need to open up. Things happen that are perfect to happen. Life has a way of taking care of itself. And this is an amazing thing to actually realize in yourself. That when life is not dominated by this impulse to sustain itself that I was talking about earlier, when it's finally free of the impulse to sustain itself, freed from that, that actually life sustains itself even without that impulse. And in a small way you've probably heard like, if you, when you really let go of what you really want, that's when you tend to get it. You really want something and you're striving and struggling and trying to make it happen, trying to make it happen. You finally let go of it and all of a sudden, there it is. Egos think, I must strive to survive. I must strive to get what I want. I must, I must, I must, I must, I must. That's the trance.
That's the asleepness. And when that's finally let go of, things work. Life takes care of itself. <laughs>